I mean, you do run the risk though of falling asleep um, sometimes, and I have done that. I fall asleep in my chair. Hopefully not after reading my own work. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jessie Burton and I'm the author of The Miniaturist, The Muse and my new book, The Restless Girls, and this is my space. So this space is inspired by my writing shed at the end of my garden and it was a sort of dream of mine always to have a separate space from where I lived and a kind of retreat really, a little cosy nook where nobody else could go, it was sort of a comfortable uh, inspiring space and when I think of something like that I'm always looking for rugs and cushions and a comfortable chair to sit in but also a very good desk, a kettle, tea. It's just a place where there's nothing else in it except for the act of writing or thinking or reading without any of the external stuff of life. Obviously if you have a life you have obligations, responsibilities, and, and that's fine, that's the privilege of life really. Um, but all that kind of stuff, all that kind of energy is very different to the energy required to write. And so that's why it's just a wonderful thing to have a separate place, to have that time uh, for those kind of thoughts and that kind of work. That was what I always wanted and, and I hope I've got. As I said, you know, I, I like to be free from distraction, but it's hardly a minimalist uh, space. There is a lot of detail. It's just a calming thing. I'm not somebody who wants to be, you know, surrounded by nothing or just like very minimal things. I need uh, comfort. I need inspiration from these pieces. And everything that is in my studio and in my flat, in fact, is there because there's a story behind it, whether it's something I picked up off on a beach in Tasmania or a chintzy china cat from a charity shop in Suffolk, something my goddaughter's painted for me. They are all comforting, pleasing, beautiful artifacts with a story. They're, they don't clutter to me. They, they, they feel like, they feel like a, an expansion, if you like, of my world. Yeah, my main goal is probably to delight myself. <laughs> I think it's just, I always have. I've always been a bit of a magpie. I've always been drawn to colour and I've always loved customising and personalising the space I'm in and something that I, means a lot to me is always pairing that up with um, a sense of confidence and uh, an awareness that you can have all those things. You can, you know, particularly as a woman, you can be interested in fashion and clothes and colour and beauty, but also have a brain. You really don't have to look at it in a binary way. And I think traditionally there is that idea, you know, that if you're bookish or if you like writing, if you're clever, you have to like wear a sack or like, you know, not be interested in things like that. And that, that to me is ridiculous and I've never subscribed to that. Um, but it does amuse me that I have this really crappy white plastic kettle that's never let me down. Um, I do drink a lot of tea, but I'm trying to sort of stay on the herbal because otherwise I'll be bouncing off the walls. I think I feel most creative probably in the evenings. Um, I work better at night, sort of from 7 or 8 in the evening through to the midnight or 1am. And I think it just feels to me because the world is quieter. Books have made my life really, so they are an absolutely fundamental part of my creative process. And um, I do read in the studio, I sit in the chair and I read. Um, but for me, poetry is always incredibly helpful. So someone like Emily Dickinson, Sylvia Plath, it's just a sort of shot. It's like a wheatgrass shot, or maybe a shot of coffee, I don't know. <laughs> In my studio, I have a, a big corkboard to the left of my head, and on it I have excerpts that I've typed out um, from other writers, uh, particularly useful or inspiring quotes. Um, I've got Elif Shafak on writing, I've got Donna Tart, but I've also got lovely emails that I've printed out from people who've enjoyed my books, which possibly sounds a bit narcissistic. There is a lot in here that is inspired by Frida Kahlo and she is a huge uh, inspiration to me. 
and has been for, for several years. I love so much about her as a woman, also her as an artist, her sort of unflinching attitude to her artistic rights. And I think she's just a great inspiration for so many people who, you know, are trying to find their voice and, and, and want to sort of express themselves without worrying what other people might think. I would hope that certainly the books that I write and the fact that I do write and that, you know, I'm constantly trying to find new ways of expressing myself and telling the world does inspire people, um, particularly young people, young women, that to, to feel that they can do that too, that, you know, you don't need to wait for permission to tell a story. It's your story.